Why hello everyone, and welcome back to After Capture. This is just a video series where I take a recent photo I took, and I just edit it, show you kind of my post-processing. So, uh, today I got this, uh, it's basically a macro uh, shot I took recently at Charleston Falls Preserve. And it's of a bumblebee on a little, like it's a little plant, it's a little purple flower uh, called a downy wood mint. And so, it's just, you can see it just pollinating on here, kind of off to the left side of this image. And I really, really like this image. Um, I used flash for it, as you can probably tell, because there's a little bit of a catch light in the bumblebee's eyes. And overall, it's just a very gorgeous image. Um, I think it turned out really well. The focus is pretty much spot on on the bumblebee, which is where I want most of the focus to be anyways. But uh, I'll tell you my settings real quick here. Um, I used ISO 1000 just to make sure I got it really illuminated because I was on the along this kind of, uh, almost like a wetland type habitat with this really narrow boardwalk and it was really kind of shaded and it was hard to really get a nice uh, even exposure so I used my flash, my external flash at a fairly low power but just enough to kind of act as like a fill light or a fill flash and that helped to just really illuminate the, the shadow details and like like the, the black uh, kind of rear end I guess of the, the bee here and I used F10 for my aperture which I, I feel like just kind of kept it really nice and consistent with the uh, sharpness uh, throughout the, for the uh, subject really, the foreground, with this uh, downy wood mint and then the bee. And then for my shutter I use uh, 1 25th of a second, which I mean, shooting, I was shooting handheld and I found it to be, you know, just the just right amount of speed that I needed. Um, the flash kind of compensated for that if there was any kind of like camera shake, but uh, from what I can tell it, it doesn't really have any, fortunately, which um, just kind of helps, you know, because obviously you don't want a blurry image in this case, at least I don't. And then uh, for focal length, I use uh, 75 millimeters, which uh, was just pretty much sufficient enough. I didn't need to zoom in or out uh, with this uh, 75 to 300 millimeter lens I used. So, so we're just gonna get started here. Um, I'm editing in Skyline Luminar 3, and it's just a single exposure, single raw file. So, uh, yep, that's pretty much it for uh, the settings at least. Uh, as you can probably tell, the histogram is pretty evenly exposed. Um, very, very much in the center. Um, naturally, I want to expose for the right, so I probably want a little more right leaning, as you can probably tell, especially like in the blue here. It's kind of more towards the left, but overall, it's got a nice, uh, I guess it would be contrast just with the way it's just kind of positioned, and it's mainly in the center, which really helps. So, yep, we're just going to get started here. Uh, yep, this is a raw file, and for um, at least Luminar specifically, I'm going to use this, it's called General. It's a workspace that, it's a custom, like a user generated workspace that I made myself. So we're just going to start here. Um, like I said, yeah, evenly exposed, so I don't think I really have to work this one too much, fortunately. Uh, my, I'm, always, I'm always bumping up clarity. I use pretty much clarity almost exclusively on most of my images, really. Um, I, I see it just, you know, it's a, it's a technique I like to use, or a slider. Um, but obviously, like most sliders, you don't want to overdo it, of course, and yeah, that'd just really be annoying. So I'll keep it at probably about an eight. And as always, I like to go before and after. There's barely any difference, from what I can tell, using that clarity slider at eight. Um, one of my favorite things about editing photos with uh, Luminar is that there's the Accent AI filter, and recently they had an update for Luminar to make it uh, like Accent AI 2.0. And I find the filter just works super, super well uh, for nature photos. You can probably tell the difference here. Obviously, this is a little too extreme for me. Um, I don't want it quite that bright, especially the background, because I want you know, I want all the focus on this purple up here and the B off to the left. But I am gonna bump it up a little bit just to make that more, make those greens and the colors more, uh, I guess, saturated and vibrant, because I really do, I like a nice, uh, I fig I kind of figure out over time is that like I really like a nice warm kind of image, or you know not too warm, but I do like I do like really vibrant, warm, saturated colors, and uh, details enhancer, which it basically for me takes the place of sharpness. It kind of just works the same thing. Uh, so we're just gonna do probably about a medium, do about six. Yeah, I find that works really really well, and it's very subtle, but. Just using these uh, about three or four sliders here, I can already kind of tell a little bit of difference, especially in that background with all the green. Um, and another idea I might try is vignetting. 
just a little bit, just to put more focus on there. So I'm gonna go down here, and there we go. Yeah, see, see the difference. I mean, obviously this is a little too extreme because you want to make it not look too unnatural. And another thing is, if you do put, if you do a set up or offer a vignette on your image, is to just zoom it all the way out and look at the image as a thumbnail. And usually, if there's something about with you know just the human eye. If you look at an image as a thumbnail, you really notice um, some very you notice drastic details, such as vignette and how they would actually look on the image. So, uh, yeah. Uh, See, even this looks too just I don't know drastic and unnatural. I like how it illuminates the. Or at least it puts more contrast and distance on the um, the yellow of the bee here. So it really it brings my eye to that really quickly now. But I feel like that's too much. So yeah, let me go back to zero. Okay, here's it without. And yeah, around the 50 range, I feel like it's a good amount. And see, so you can see the difference is pretty clear. But it, see, I, I I still consider this very subtle vignetting. But it, it like it's there. It's enough to really help just the look of it all and other than that I'm not sure I'm gonna add uh, HSL it's a hue saturation luminance and I'm gonna I'm gonna try and mess around with this purple and see here here's a drastic all the way 100% but tone it down yeah because it just it doesn't have that much pop as I want it to you know I want the colors to kind of really here we go now, I guess maybe I do want it pretty high up there. <laughs> eh, it's a little too much. It kind of looks weird. It's almost too colorful in comparison to the rest of the image. <laughs> in like an unnatural way, I guess. Eh, okay. Yeah, I mean, it, it adds a little more purple saturation. <laughs> right there and yeah that's it I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move back up the contrast here and just add a little bit more there we go now my rule of thumb is that the more time I spend on an image the more likely it's gonna be overproduced so I try to keep my time pretty quick to like let's let's say under five minutes now this is a little bit different just because I'm filming a video and I'm kind of explaining it more, but if I'm just you know editing on my own, I would pretty, pretty much I do it pretty quickly. I do it about five minutes or so uh, for most images. That's all it really takes to really uh, just work with the raw files and just edit them to your liking. So other than this, I don't think there's too much else I really want to do to it. You know, I, I don't see much else. I mean, it looks pretty good as is. The exposure is pretty good. Maybe I'll bump it up just a tad bit. And there we go. You can just see how it really, like I thought it looked really good before, honestly, just the raw fell as is. But then you see it how it is um, now. And the colors are just, you know, they got more punch to them, especially that purple. Uh, the contrast is much greater, especially on the bumblebee. And then, yeah, you just see it before and it's like the lighting is a lot more flat. And just over, just overall, the whole image, you know, has a much more flatter lighting. Which I mean, it was when I took the image a more cloudy, kind of um, overcast, kind of subdued way. But you see it now, and it's just add a lot more color and contrast to it. Which I mean, some people may not like that, but I think it looks pretty good overall. Yeah, I mean. That's pretty much it. I don't, I don't know what else I'd do to it. Like I said, the more time I spend, the more I'm just going to add 100 different filters and different sliders, and I don't want to make it too yeah, crazy and stuff. So I think this will pretty much be it. Yep. Can't really say there's much else to do here. So we're going to go to uh, File up here, uh, the top left, Export. And uh, if you've seen my previous videos, you know this. I usually just I title most of my images just really basic uh, like descriptions. So in this case, since there's a bee and then there's a plant, I'm gonna call it Bumble Bee 
and on downy wood mint. And then I do kind of like as a, I guess the way to future proof my photos in the cataloging of just everything. And that kind of helps when you're, if I'm searching through my, you know, my backlog and my portfolio is that I make acronyms. So in this case, I would just take the first letter of each word and just turn that into a little acronym. And then I add a number on the end, uh, depending on what the, uh, the uh, order of like how many images I've edited that are just like this. So uh, this will be basically the first one, and so I'll just do, um, like I said, first first letter of each word, bumblebee. Uh, we'll, we'll leave out the on, downy wood mint, and we'll call it zero one. So yeah, bumblebee on downy wood mint B B D W M O one, and it's that easy. And I export at JPEG. My color space is S R G B because um, I just find that consistent enough. If I ever submit this to a contest, um, most contests seem to like that. They prefer sRGB over the Adobe kinds, or the, the, those, those kind of color spaces, at least. Um, no, uh, no sharpening, because I pretty much already do that uh, before I export. And uh, keep the size and the, keep the resizing, don't resize it, I mean, keep it to its original uh, file size. If I want to resize it, I'll do that later. Like if I'm going to upload it to social media or to, like I said, a contest or anything of that sort. Uh, keep the resolution the same. And uh, this is important. Uh, keep the quality of the JPEG at 80% because if you keep it at 100%, it's literally the same uh, kind of pixel, pixels per inch, the same density quality as it would be at 80%. But the only downside with that is, is that the file size would be much greater. But I, I use software anyways to uh, downsize my uh, JPEG file size, and I find that works really well. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So we're just going to export, and that'll be it. And it'll just go to my uh, desired my uh, portfolio where I export all my JPEGs, all my exported JPEGs go to. And like I said, yeah, I'll downsize that JPEG file. I said JPEG a lot there, <laughs> and I'll back them up and upload them to the website. So that's pretty much it, guys. Um, really quick and easy video. That's a great image. I love the image. Um, I'll show you the final result here as well. But that's pretty much it, guys. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. Um, subscribe for more videos like this. Um, my favorite videos, honestly, that I make are the ones where I go out and explore. So definitely check those ones out as well, um, where I go on location and you get to see my techniques in the field and show me kind of. I'll show you how they. Expl I'll explain those details and techniques and show you some amazing photos and some beautiful just scenery of Southwest Ohio. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, thanks so much for watching and until next time, uh, make sure you get out there and edit your photos. So, see you guys.